Hi guys, my name is Michael Kosha. I'm the sole creator of the game Swords and Magic and Stuff. Since I started posting my devlogs, I've had hundreds of people ask me why I use Unreal Engine over other engines. So I thought I'd just take a minute and make a video that answers that question. Oh, and stick around till the end of the video to hear about how you can become a beta tester for Swords and Magic and Stuff. And just a quick disclaimer, because we're talking about game engines. Everything I'm about to state here are just my opinions and understandings. I'm going to do my best not to talk down on any other engines, no matter how much I dislike the engine for whatever reason. Every game engine has its pros and cons, and this video is simply my personal list of pros for the game engine I use. If I do happen to share a few of my own personal cons from other engines from my experience, then please just keep in mind that those aren't cold hard facts, just my opinions. So let's try to keep the comment section civil and constructive as well. And let's get down to business. I broke down my opinion into six different reasons. So reason number one. Unreal Engine is quick to get up and running. When I opened Unreal Engine for the very first time, I spent approximately 30 seconds looking for the test play button. I pressed it, and I was immediately playing a game. Now, of course, that game was pretty simple and didn't really have a beginning, end, or any sort of obstacles, but I could walk around the level and interact with my character in 3D space, and for me, that was pretty cool at first. And yeah, I know you can do this in other game engines with their template character controllers they usually come with, but with Unreal, my first few projects used the default character controller, and other than swapping out the art, it seemed to work pretty damn well. If I wasn't happy with the jump physics, I didn't have to rewrite the entire controller, I simply clicked on the character movement component and dialed in the physics exactly how I wanted. No code, no rewriting, just tweaking and test playing. Unreal Engine also has a fantastic level editor, with a few awesome features like VSP brushes. These are basically just basic shapes that give you a ton of level design power. You simply drag one in, modify the shape, size, and in some cases, some of the brushes like stairs even have special settings to change the size, step amount, curve, etc. It makes blocking out a gray box level so easy, and with the workflow I came up with, I can block out an entire level, convert all the BSPs to static meshes, export them to Maya or Blender, and immediately start replacing the gray boxes with final art, in scale, with no guesswork. It's just perfect. So that leads me into reason number two. The engine has a clear focus on first and third person games. Obviously you can make any type of game you really want with Unreal Engine, but if you're looking to make a character-driven game with one of these two perspectives, you're basically halfway there already. Other engines give you more of an empty plate to make whatever you want it seems, but Unreal really has everything ready to go for action games, first-person shooters, and anything else you want to do. In seven days I built a very respectable first-person horror game that blew up on itch.io. It was played by Markiplier and Jacksepticeye as part of their Halloween game montages. If that's not a testament to how streamlined Unreal makes it to make a game of that genre, then I really don't know what is. Number 3. Unreal's Commitment to Community Every week, Unreal Engine runs a live stream that covers a feature, an update, an event, or something over on Twitch. These are so useful to Unreal devs, and while they only bring in a moderate amount of viewers, they're always uploaded to YouTube afterward where you can rewatch them to brush up on whatever they were talking about. I can't tell you how many times I've recommended the VOD for the live stream about blueprint communication. And yes, it'll be in the video description because I already know that you guys are going to flood the comments section asking for it. Not only do they run a seriously useful Twitch stream and YouTube channel, but they're also extremely engaged in their community. Each week there are three community spotlights, featured screenshots from their forums, and usually an interview or another focus piece on an Unreal dev or team. These are awesome ways to get people showing off their work and seeing others. Plus it's a good opportunity for some free marketing if you make something Epic's really impressed with. And if that wasn't enough, let's not forget about the Epic Mega Jams they put on with awesome prizes any game dev would pine over. Epic knows how to keep their creative community engaged, and I love being part of it. So number four, Fortnite. I know what you're thinking, what the hell does Fortnite have to do with why I chose Unreal Engine over other engines? Well, let me explain. Fortnite is a massive success. It's making money hand over fist, and it's Epic's biggest cash cow right now. What that means is that anything the Fortnite team needs to improve the product and bring in more money, the Fortnite team gets. And ultimately, so do I. Every few months there's a good size engine update, with dozens of new features that have been tested and proven in one of the biggest games out there right now, and now I'm able to use those awesome features to make my tiny indie product better. So love it or hate it, Fortnite is a huge reason why Unreal Engine is just so damn powerful right now. Alright, so that brings me to number 5 all the built-in features. If I went to another hugely popular 3D game engine, 
uh, which I'm not going to name. I'd be using dozens of plugins and writing a bunch of features to do what I'm doing in Swords and Magic. I remember using one of these hugely popular game engines, again not going to mention any names, a few years ago on a project and waiting a few weeks for my programmer to build the database tool, and then another few weeks while he wrote a tool for placing foliage on static meshes, and then another few weeks for some other obscure tool that we needed for our game at the time. After a few months of development, we had really made no progress on our game. But we had a whole bunch of neat tools which just seemed cornerstone to making the game, in the genre we were making it anyway. Unreal Engine doesn't have this problem, it's chock full of features. I rarely need a plugin and when I do it's usually something totally extra that just makes my life a bit easier, but is never a plugin that adds a paramount feature to the engine. They're already there. Now let me play devil's advocate for a minute. Because I'm not completely ignorant here, I realize that the other engine I use has probably been updated tenfold since then, with all the features I could now need. And I know that Unreal Engine is still packed full of junk, and I understand that all those features can also be a downside. It means the engine has a lot of bloat for people who don't need a data table or foliage or hell, even 3D at all. But in my experience, I think I'd rather sift through a sea of built-in features than stumble through a desert of a game engine where I have to go looking for third-party solutions or write them myself. As an indie dev who's way more focused on art than programming, I welcome the bloat. And speaking of being artist, reason number six is simply the number one reason I chose Unreal Engine. And even without all the other reasons I previously listed, I still think this one would be enough for me. Blueprints. I've spent the last 13 years making games, but I started from humble beginnings in RPG Maker. I used the simple eventing system to build dozens of games, including many that were way beyond the scope of RPG Maker. I've never really been interested in writing code, and after RPG Maker I teamed up with a programmer who did it for me. I started focusing on making pixel art and eventually vector art, and then hand painted sprites. When I parted ways with that programmer, I moved into another game engine called Stencil. Stencil used a code block system much like the events in RPG Maker or the programming language Scratch, and it meant that I could do any kind of game I wanted completely on my own. I loved the freedom of working solo and starting, or quitting, any project I wanted. When I decided to take the plunge into 3D, it was really only a natural choice to go with Unreal Engine. In Unreal Engine, I can visualize everything my game is doing with extremely simple to follow logic nodes. If I want to change a variable, I simply drop in that variable from the list, set it to what I want it to be, and move on. I don't have to memorize any syntax or worry about misspelling any variables or count brackets to find out where I missed one. Blueprints are just easy to read. They're extremely powerful, and I have very little limitations with them. And they're expanding all the time. They're so heavily ingrained in the engine now that even the most adept C++ programmer uses them for simple solutions in their projects. They're the perfect solution for artists or designers to get results fast. And when you combine them with a skilled programmer, you can have an entire team working on what they want to work on at the same time. The programmer can worry about the heavy lifting, and they can expose nodes in the blueprint system to the design team. Then the design team can tweak those values using blueprints or build out simple parts of those systems like traps or spell effects and rarely even need to request help from the programmer. I can honestly say that I think visual scripting in one form or another is the future of game development, and every engine will start adopting a robust scripting language for non-coders. It may be a while before these languages can do all the heavy lifting that a written language can do, but it's definitely going to happen. So now you know why I've chosen Unreal Engine, but the real question here is, is Unreal Engine right for you? I love to just say yes, but there are a lot of drawbacks. I mean, let's be honest. Unreal Engine takes a 5% cut every quarter when you earn over $3,000, at least at the time of making this video. And that's a good chunk of your profits. You're probably already losing 30% to Steam. In my opinion, that 5% is well worth what you're getting though. And if your project flops, then you probably want to pay a dime anyway, so no sweat. Every engine has its pros and cons. If I were going to make a 2D game, I'd probably use an engine like Godot or Game Maker or even Unity. Unreal is just sorely lacking in that department. But not every engine can do everything great, and I'm actually glad that Unreal isn't trying to. They do a handful of things better than any other engine in my opinion, and that's why I love it. It fits my needs. So don't worry so much about whether you're using the right engine or the best engine, or really what engine you're using at all. As long as it works for your project and gets you to the finished product with minimal headaches, then you're on the right track. Just make a game, because in the end, that's really all that matters. So in the last video, I talked about why I skipped the devlog. 
Again, I apologize for leaving you guys hanging, but it's for good reason. I'm going to reveal something awesome this weekend, and I'm pretty sure you're all going to love it. In fact, I'm so excited about this news that I want to share the excitement. This weekend, I'm updating the Steam with a new build of the game, and I'm going to need some testers. I'm going to give away a whole bunch of beta keys this weekend to give you guys an opportunity to check out what I've been working on. If you want to be considered for the beta, join the Discord, and in the comments section below, post your Discord name and why you want to be a beta tester for Swords and Magic and stuff. If you're chosen, I'll message you a Steam key this weekend when this new build goes live. I'm also looking for streamers and YouTubers who want to share their experience with the game. You don't have to have a huge following to be accepted. I love watching people play my game so I can learn how to make it better. Blind playthroughs are awesome, even if I'm the only one watching. Post your social media link in the Discord server under the Other Streams channel, even if it's a YouTube link, and I'll check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters for funding these videos and my project. I really appreciate all the support. And a special thank you to my entire mod team on Twitch and Discord. I have to have the most supportive mods on the internet, I swear. They put up with all my shenanigans, and yours, and even help me cover my tracks when I go too far. Thank you guys for everything you do.